Good morning. It's Thursday and I am Kathleen from Origami and You. The Aquatennial is partnering with the Minneapolis Craft Market and other local organizations to offer online content like today's demo all month long. The Minneapolis Craft Market's virtual Aquatennial Market is open and available to shop through July 25th. You can shop great local makers throughout the entire month. This is the first of weekly virtual craft workshops through the Minneapolis Craft Market and Aquatennial this month. Mark your calendar for the next two Thursdays, July 16th and 23rd, also at 10 a.m. For more Aquatennial virtual content and information, visit aquatennial.com or follow at Aquatennial on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So like I said, I'm Kathleen from Origami and You, and I'm here today to teach you some origami. Uh, first, before I get started, I just wanted to tell you that I do teach origami all around the cities and due to the pandemic, all around the nation. Uh, so, uh, some classes that I have coming up at the Minnesota Center for the Book Arts. Uh, I have a mandala coming up. It's very meditative to fold. Hmm, isn't that coincidental? And I also have a, excuse me, an origami lantern workshop coming up in August. Again, those two are through the Min Minneapolis Center for the Book Arts. And I have some kids classes coming up at the Minnetonka Center for the Arts and we'll be folding animals in one class and another class strictly on cats and dogs. Oh, isn't that sweet? Okay, but for today we are going to be folding some spinners. Action origami is one of my all-time favorite things. So I hope you have at least three pieces of paper ready. I am going to switch over my camera. So give me just one second and, okay, maybe more than one second. And you go ahead and get your three papers ready. I'm going to remind you to write your questions in the chat and I will do my best to, yeah, <laughs> can you see me? Yes. Everything okay? All right. So I'm coming back in just a second with my camera and so have your pieces of paper ready and we'll get to the folding. So no technical difficulties, it just takes this to switch my camera. There we go, hello, here I'm back. Okay, so this is what we are going to be folding today. An amazing, awesome spinner. You can't go wrong. It always turns out, it always spins. And it's pretty easy. Now I have some pretty colorful ones here, um, but the paper color does not really matter at all. You can draw on it, you can color, you can use this fancy origami paper. So I hope that you will enjoy folding these today. I also want to tell you before we get started, sorry, so many things to tell you before we get started. This is called a three-piece spinner. This is one piece, this is a second piece of paper, and this is the third piece of paper. And I know the creator of this. I was lucky to go to Japan to an origami conference last year, and um, the creator is Yamaguchi-san. You always call Japanese masters by their last name, uh, but his first name is Makoto. So in Japanese, the creator, Yamaguchi-san, calls this Makoto Koma. And Koma in Japanese is the name for spinner. So he has named this Makoto's Spinner, like his first name. Like if it was mine, I'd say Kathleen's Spinner. 
But what he really loves about this, and he loves me to share with everyone when I teach this, is that this is a palindrome in Japanese. If you know what a palindrome is, it's a word that's the same backwards and forwards, like mom, I'll just do a quick one, like it the, reads the same that way and this way in English. In Spanish, <laughs> no, I used to teach Spanish. In Japanese, a palindrome goes by syllables. So it's ma, ko, to, ko, ma, ma, ko, to, ko, ma. So I love sharing that. So this is a ma, ko, to, ko, ma or a three-piece spinner. Okay, I bet you are more than ready with your three pieces of paper. So this part I'm going to call the handle. This part I'm going to call the middle. No glue, no cuts, no glue. The middle, and this part I'm going to call the base. Okay, so those are the three pieces. And first we are going to make the base. So if you have a variety of papers, go ahead and choose your color that you want for your base. That's what I'm going to fold first, okay? So first what you want to do is orient your paper like a square, and then you're going to fold it in half. And it's always good to take your time, line up the edges, Make sure that it meets at the top. There's no white showing on all edges. And then I've already folded this one, but you should hold at the top in the middle and you would have like a bubble right here before it's folded. And then you drag one or a couple of fingers down to break that bubble and then finish the crease folding across to the right or left and then to the other side. Make a nice firm crease, always crisp creases in origami. Then you're going to unfold, take the time to unfold, rotate your paper so the crease that you just made is going vertically and you're going to repeat. So the bottom fold is going to go up to the top, line it up so you see no white, hold it, I'm pressing against the table, then I'm going to drag my finger down to break that bubble and start the crease, go off to the right and then off to the left. So that's a way to make your creases accurate and take your time. Okay, then we are going to open our paper and in your square, you should see creases that make a plus pattern. Okay, how's the speed for everyone? Go ahead and comment if you'd like to. Okay, I'm gonna assume that it's good. Now we're gonna do what's called a blintz fold. Oh, thank you for the comment. Um, and I'm just gonna show you why it's called a blintz fold. Maybe you've heard of German blintzes, it's a pastry. So they would put the yummies in here, either savory or sweet, and then they'd bring the dough like this together. I'm not gonna do it completely to my paper. And you know how dough kind of sticks together. So this is why this fold in origami is called a blintz. But what we're gonna do is take each corner to the center. Now you may have done this if you've made a fortune teller or some people call it a cootie catcher. And you've just gone, so hold on a second before you finish. You've probably just gone around and around and around and you go fast because you know exactly what you're doing. But when you get to the last one, maybe you have like a lot of overlap or you have a huge gap. Well, let me give you an origami hint. It's a good idea to do two to do the opposite corner first and also use these creases that you made as like borders for this triangle. So try not to go outside of the triangle. So I'm watching, 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 keeping the triangle inside there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish my crease. And then of course you go ahead and finish the other two sides. So doing the two opposites is not always foolproof, but usually, helps. Oh yeah, worked for me today. Yay. Doesn't always work for me. 
All right, and again, crisp creases. So you can always go around, press hard with your, the pad of your finger or your nail and crisp creases. Okay, so we've got a completed blintz fold. Let me check the chat here. Okay, great. We have a panelist, or sorry, a attendee with a hand raised. Does that mean slow down or question? Go ahead and type in the chat if you can, or the Q&A. Let me know what your question is. I can also repeat, I can go back and repeat this. So the first thing that I did was to orient like a square and then fold in half from the bottom to the top, unfold, rotate the paper, and repeat bottom edge to the top edge, crease well, unfold, and now we're going to do that blintz fold, which is the corners to the center, taking care to make sure that they stay in their sections. So, and my hint again is to do two opposite corners and then finish off. When you get to the third, it'll look like an envelope or envelope if you're from the East Coast, and then you finish the fourth. Okay, well, I hope everyone's with me and this is a good speed. So now we are again going to blintz. So on top of this blintz, we're going to blintz. So the flaps might want to move around, but just try and keep them in place. And this corner is now going to go to this inside. So I like to just put my finger here and smooth out the paper so it doesn't get any wrinkles in it. And then I'm bringing this to the center, creasing well. I can zoom in here if that helps. Oh, that's a big zoom, huh? And again, the opposite corner. So this corner, I'm gonna go in to make sure it's all smooth, in to the center. Okay, so they meet right there. They're meeting in the middle. That's a nice thought, huh? Everyone should meet in the middle. A little compromise. Okay, now this one is not behaving as well for me. So it's better to leave a gap than to have one side overlap. So that's how I'm solving that problem. Does everyone see that on mine? Okay, then I'm gonna finish the fourth side over here. Oh, and that one's a beauty. Mm, I'm happy with that one. Okay. So we have a blintz on top of a blintz. And again, creasing well. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we're almost done with the base. We're gonna take these points and we're gonna bring them back out so that they hit the edge of this square that we've made. So this point is gonna go back out and we don't want it to go past this edge. It's gonna go right there. And to make it straight, I'm gonna grab my marker again. Do you see this crease? There's always little hints or little um, clues in origami. So you bring this and then that center crease should line up with that orange crease that I drew, that white slit, I'll call it a slit, okay? And you don't have to do opposites on this, but I will, just so you can see. So there's my crease and I'm gonna have this point lie along that crease. There we go, and then I'm gonna rotate. I'm gonna do the other two. And again, crease well. And the last one. Okay, so again, what I did after this second blintz was complete, it was like this, and then I took the points and I brought them out to the edge of the square, straight out. And I knew it was straight when it followed that middle crease. 
that's it. That is the base. Looks like this one. Okay, so go ahead and put that aside for our three piece spinner. We've finished one piece. Now we're going to do what's the middle. And again, to show you a completed one, that would be this part. So we just finished the base and now we're gonna do the middle. And this is what I call the handle, the handle part. So we're doing the middle now. So if you have colored paper, choose the color that you'd like for it. I'm going to do orange. And you want to have the color side down. Now, one reason that I chose this model, not only because I learned it from Yamaguchi san, and um, he wanted me to tell you about the Makoto Koma, and it's really fun to spin, but it's also easy to remember because there's lots of repetitive folds. So I hope that you will remember this. So, what did we do the first time? The first fold on this one, we folded, we oriented it like a square and we folded the paper in half. So we're gonna do that again and make try to make sure there's no white on the top or the sides. Hold, drag your fingers down to break the bubble and go off to either side, creasing firmly. Then unfold and rotate your paper and repeat, bottom fold, bottom fold, no, bottom edge goes up to the top edge, hold it tightly in place, and then break the bubble and go off to each side, unfold. What did we do next on this one? The blintz, yes, so we're gonna blintz again. And again, a blintz means all four corners to the center. So we're going to do corner to the center, keeping the triangle in its boundaries there. And two opposites was my hint to you to make it accurate. I left a little gap on this one, but that's okay. And I'm gonna rotate and do this one, the third. Always creasing firmly, crisp creases. Let's try saying that five times fast. Crisp creases, crisp creases, crisp creases. Okay, you can keep going with that and try that. <laughs> I guess I can't do that. Crisp creases. Crispen them up. Crispen, crispy up. Okay, um, so hopefully you have a nice blintz. Now this one, we did a blintz again. This one we're also gonna blintz again, but, 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 we need to flip it over. So this one we did first two steps the same and then we're gonna flip and blintz. So be sure you're on the smooth side. Did you flip? Everybody check, did you flip? Blintz and flip. If you're folding with someone at home, check their paper. Did you flip? I'm gonna ask my dog, did you flip? She's sleeping, she didn't flip. That's okay. All right, so now we're gonna do a blintz again. So hopefully you can see the center. Oh, orange on orange, that's really smart of me. But it's a little shiny. Okay, so corner to the center. Blintz, I hope you're enjoying the blintz because we're gonna do lots of blintzes. And then maybe you'll eat some blintzes later on today or in your life at some point. And I was talking so much that this one is really not impressive, but that's okay. We can go on. And we're going to rotate and repeat. So we've got a blintz. Now this time the blintz corners or the triangles we have have a slit through them. That's what we want. Okay, so we've blinced and flipped and blinced again. Hope I'm not going too fast. So I'll just undo and repeat this. So we did a blintz, we flipped, and now we've blinced again. So second blintz. We're gonna flip again. 
Now on this side, if you orient it like a diamond, it should look like diamonds and you have slits that separate them. So diamond or squares, squares or diamonds. And we're gonna blintz again. So corners to the center. And it's getting thick, but use your muscles. I know you can do it. Still try the strategy of doing two opposite corners. And then third. And again, keep a distance, keep a space in between there if it's getting tricky to keep them all even. And my third one is a little, is unbehaving, not behaving, but my fourth one is all kind of behaving. So it should look like this. So you should have triangular flaps again with the slit going through the middle. And then if you lift it up, you have a singular triangular flap. And then if you peek underneath, we shouldn't be doing this. Don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, there's white or whatever color you have. Okay. Flip again. Yep, I said it. After this blintz, we're going to flip again. Okay. Everybody with me? I hope so. So on this, oh, time for the big zoom. On this side, we have, if you orient it like a diamond, we again have those diamonds, but now they have a slit through them. Now this time we're not gonna blintz. We did three blintzes. We did blintz, flip, blintz, flip, blintz, flip. This was our flip, and now we're gonna backwards blintz. Hmm, let's ponder that for a second. What could a backwards blintz be? A blintz was corners to the center, so this is gonna be center to the corners. Yes, a backwards, I made up that word, backwards blintz. Okay, so this is going to be the inner corner here. Out, center. Now if it wants to go like that and do some really wild craziness, don't let it stay down. And out to the corner. Rotate and out to the corner. Rotate and out to the corner. And you should come up with this little funky little frame. Now you could actually use that as a frame. You could put this down, one of the bottom edges down, and it'll stand up like that. I know you can't see because it's standing up. You could put your school picture in there or any, oh, orange on orange again. Here I go. There, there I am. That's my school picture. So yeah, you could use that for many things. But anyway, we are done with the middle. Oh, zoom out again. We're done with the middle. I hope I'm not making you sick with the zooming in and out. Okay, so done with the middle, done with this one. But we're not gonna assemble yet. We will assemble when we finish the handle, all three pieces. So we're ready to move on to the handle. Is everyone else ready to move on to the handle? Do you have the middle section finished? Are you with me? Any questions? I hope my pace is still good for everyone. I hope you're loving the blints. Okay, so last piece of paper. Again, you want the color side down. And we're gonna be making this handle. Thank you for answering, great. Okay, I saw a yes. Okay, so we are going to do the same thing. See, it's not supposed to be boring. It's supposed to be doing all of the, um, it's supposed to be, I just forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, it's not supposed to be boring. It's supposed to be very meditative and easy to remember. So you know what you're doing. So same thing, fold up, free swell. I didn't do the hold and fold, but I think you know that. Okay, open, rotate, fold up again. 
I'll do it this time. Hold, drag, and fold. Break the bubble. Fold. Open. I see a question. Pause. Let's pause for a moment. It's not a question. Someone's having fun. Awesome. Thank you for commenting. You know what? I'm having a blast too. Okay, so what did we do on these other two? Oh, that rhymes. What did we do on these other two? We blinced. We're going to blince again. It's a blintz party. So corner to the center. You can get really accurate with your blintzes. Blintz eye. I don't know if there's a plural for blintzes. Okay, then we bring this third one in. And the fourth. And again, take your time. No speeding along. Oh, I'm, oh, I spoke too soon. I was going to say I'm very satisfied with that one. Got a little overlap. A little overlappage there, but oh well. Okay, so we've got our nice blints. Okay, and on both of these, we blinced a second time. This one we did it right on top, and this one we flipped and did the blints. This one, we're going to do it right on top. So right on top, we're going to blints again. Two opposite corners. And then let's finish it off with the third and the fourth. This is just what I love about origami. The amazing things you can make by just folding paper, no cuts, no glue. Just your hands and paper. Ah, wish I could go a little higher, like magic. Okay, then you're going to Blintz again. Yep, you heard me. Right on top. Third time on top. No flipping. Don't flip. Right on top. So three blintzes right on top of each other. Yes, it's thick, but you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. And again, it is better to have a gap than an overlap. A gap is better than an overlap. Don't overlap, have a gap. I'm gonna make that into some kind of wrap, but that didn't work. Okay, so I'm very pleased with that one. We have a nice gap there. So you did a blintz on top of a blintz on top of a blintz. Blintz three times, well, that's kind of pretty, huh? Blintz three times. And now, to make it into this lovely handle shape, not hard, but we have to do different things than a blimps. So orient it like a diamond, and where we've got space between the, I'll just call this a triangle, even though it's two pieces, where we've got space there, we're going to fold the paper in half from point to point, bottom point to top point. Unfold then rotate so you have the other point sticking up the side point and again diagonal fold right here so you're just kind of encouraging that to that weaker section and you can see i folded some of mine in half so in half in half my, some of my paper came along with it that's okay i'm just going around and around kind of encouraging this okay there we go good enough so all on those slits now we're going to flip it over you can see that x that you made if you orient your paper like a square now you do need to put it on the table and now we're going to fold a plus on top of that square. So the bottom is going to come up to the top. And it's thick, but you can do it. Okay, just press it the best you can down at the bottom. 
no, you know, hitting or slapping or anything. Don't need to do that. Then rotate and bring the bottom up to the top. Even if you just give it a little hint of a crease, if it's really hard to push, just give it a little hint. Okay, then unfold. Now when you unfold, if you push, push, no, push, if you, if you <clears throat> lift it up off the table and you push from underneath, Hopefully it'll become a little bit what we call convex, meaning that it sticks up a little bit in the middle. Can you see that? Like a very, very shallow tent. Like you're starting to make a tent and you don't quite have it together yet. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Then we're going to take two opposite corners of our square and I'm just gonna push in this action with my fingers, these two, push in and together, in and together, just a little bit on this side, and then I'm gonna not leave these guys out. You get to do it too. Over here, in and together, and you wanna keep rotating. Be sure your flaps on the bottom are, are flat, and so just go back and forth until you can finally squash it all together and get this handle shape or some people call it a propeller. Okay, so it should look like that. So I'll do that again. Be sure that you've folded in half. Rotate, fold in half. Then you wanna pick it up off the table, push from the bottom underneath, right in the middle, pop, pop the paper, get that shallow tent, and then Pinch the sides a little bit for these two guys and then these two opposite guys. Pinch, push them together. That's your handle. Now, if for some reason you got this, you got a diamond, it just means that you need to open and pop that middle, push this, pop, and then close it this way, okay? All right, we're ready to assemble. So we need to put them together in the order that we made them. So the first one, <clears throat> excuse me, first one we're gonna open up, not this um, little triangle that we did, we're not gonna unfold that, but like the frame, the sides of the frame. So here's the side of the frame, side of the frame, side of the frame, side of the frame. Okay, so we just have, that inside right there. And you don't have to really flatten it open. And then the second piece, you'd think that it goes in like square on top of the square, right? But no, 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 no. It goes in like a diamond, okay? And it should just exactly fit. The points go right there. Magic, isn't that magical? And then these flaps need to be going up Okay, so remember those were the ones that we did the backwards blends. We're gonna make those stick up for just a minute. Now we're going to put the frame, the sides of the first piece, the bottom piece, put that down. It should just fit right there. And then before we move on, we're going to put this triangular flap down on top of it. So this is our way of kind of locking that in. And I'm recreasing, obviously. That's what that action is. Okay, then we're gonna rotate and do this again. You kind of wanna try to hold it all together because if you just do one and move on, it might not work. Okay, oh, and see that one? I might have to shift mine over a little bit. Okay, creasy, creasy. Move it and crease. And it should kind of stay down like that. If yours starts to pop up like this, then you need to crease a little bit more here. Or you just need to wait until the next step, which will lock it in even more. So the next step is taking your handle and we're gonna put these points of the handle underneath this little pocket that we've created. See the pocket there? Do you see it right there, pocket? So again, we're, we wanna keep these flat down, but we wanna just lift up this pocket. So I like to just lift up the pocket by 
putting the point in there, it's the point of the handle. And the handle, you can move it all around, so you can do what you need to do. So now I'm gonna put this one in this pocket. And I have lifted it off the table. If you wanna keep it on the table for the table's help, that's just fine. So now these, see they're sticking out there, but I'm gonna move this over, I'm moving the handle, and I'm gonna go to the corner here, and then I'm gonna just lift, oh, my hand's in the way, sorry. I'm gonna lift this pocket up just a little so I can get this underneath. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna lift up this pocket just a little. And then see how I have the handle? You kinda of have to handle the handle. <laughs> and then when you get it in, you know it might be all crazy-like, but you wanna straighten it up. And I promise it will spin. Everybody should spin. Yay! Woo! Does anyone have a question or need a repeat on the assembly? Or as I like to call it, the assemblage. That's not a word either, don't repeat. Questions, let me check the questions. Will you send us paper instructions of this for later? Ooh, um, that's a great question. I, uh, I'm not sure how to send anything to you. Um, you can check my, my Facebook or my Instagram and I can post something there. It's origami and you, or at origami and you. A perfect spin, all right. I, see, I told you, everyone will, everyone will have success. Um, we have plenty of time to do another model. That's fantastic. So I would like to teach you something else completely different, um, having to do with aqua or the aqua tenial. I hope you have more paper there. I suggested that you have four or, um, or six pieces of paper. Hopefully you only use three or hopefully you can get some more quickly. I would like to teach you a fish. Now what I love about this fish is that it can go this way or it can be facing the other way. Hmm. Oh, I happen to have one here. You can make it facing either way and it can be what I like to call happy fish or not mean, but you know, or not sad, but um, oh, what should we call it? Someone help me come up with a good word for it. Um, a racing, it looks like a racing fish, doesn't it? Like serious, intense. So happy, happy, or racing. So <clears throat> if you'd like to fold this fish with me and follow along, I would love to teach you in the time we have left. So I'm going to use orange again. I think orange shows up pretty well. So the, <clears throat> excuse me. So the first thing that we're going to do is orient our paper like a square. We want the color that we want the fish facing down, facing the table if you have two colors. Oh, hold on, I see some messages. <clears throat> Contemplative, thank you. Yes, that is a perfect word. Great. Okay, um, so we are going to orient this like a square and we're gonna bring the bottom up to the top. Oh, are you having deja vu? You should. Okay, line it up all nice and neat and then hold and fold. Unfold. You always want to take the time to unfold, rotate, and repeat. So the bottom edge goes up to the top. Creasing well. Unfold. Sorry, no blintzes in this one. I think you got your fill of blintzes. This one we're going to do cupboard doors. 
So this is our center crease. Yeah, we know that. Now we're gonna bring each edge, we call it the raw edge of the paper, the cut edge, in to meet that center line. It doesn't have to be the right edge. It could be the bottom edge, completely up to you, whatever is your comfort level, okay? So I, this is my comfort level to fold away from me, but I don't think that looks like a cupboard door then. I'll show you. This is why it's called the cupboard door. So that's half of the cupboard. And then this is the other half. So the left or top or bottom, whichever one you didn't do, comes in to meet. Again, we always wanna make sure that it's lined up and it's not overlapping, not too much of a gap and start in the middle and then crease out. Cupboard doors, there they are. Nothing inside. That was my house during the quarantine. Anyway, yeah, okay, so with the cupboard doors on the front, we are going to now flip to the back. Okay, so be sure I call this the smooth side because if we do that on this side, it's, wow, it's not smooth, right? So flip cupboard doors are on the table. Now on the left end, we are going to take the bottom left corner and the whole left side. We are going to bring that up to match the folded edge on the top. And you will see this extra little flap triangle there and that's what you want you don't that one doesn't come along for the ride the ride going up to the top of the fold and then you're going to crease all the way through okay and be careful when you're creasing of this little color change flap there oh i did what, exactly what i was hoping you wouldn't do okay so it should look like that i'll repeat that so we flipped over we're on the smooth side and we're bringing this whole left edge and left corners, our helper, to go up and lay along the top folded edge. Be sure you leave this little corner flap, leave that. Okay, we're gonna unfold. We wanna make a, an X here, so to do that, now we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna grab this corner and it's the same back edge. Now we're gonna to go to the folded bottom. Okay, and again, you can turn it around however it's comfortable for you, but always please come back home. Come back to home base. Orient yours so it's looking like mine, okay? That'll be easier to figure out and follow along. Okay, so you should have an X in the back or in the back. Well, this is the front of the fish and this is the back. That's why I'm saying the back. I can see it already. Maybe you can't. Okay, so on the left side. Now, we are going to flip it over momentarily on the cupboard door side and we are going to fold the X in half. So we're gonna bring this, let me just get out my Goodness, I have an orange <laughs> marker here. That is not smart of me. Apologies, but I think it's shiny, right? It's shiny. So we're gonna bring this to, well, we should have a center crease there too, but we're gonna fold the X in half this way. Okay, so crease well. Unfold, and remember this is the back. So now we're gonna go to the front again. Now, this should be a huge mountain fold. That means it's sticking up like a mountain. And these folds of the X should be valleys dipping down. So your paper is kind of like this, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're going to press in the middle of the X. And your paper should just change direction. Do it again. Press in the middle, okay? Now I'm going to turn it this way so we can see. So the rest of the paper is down here. And this is, here. oh, maybe it's time to zoom in again. Let's zoom in. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay. So now this, 
um, these sides of the paper are kind of sticking up off the table. They should be for you too, if you creased well. We're going, this is the action I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my pointer fingers behind there and I'm gonna go in and down. And I'm going to go in and down like that. And then you'll have this interesting shape and you just want to push this little hood shape, push it down. Everything knows where to go and falls into shape. Falls into place. There we go. Isn't that lovely? Okay, I'll do that one more time. So there's our X. It's very important that you did the diagonal creases on this side and the middle crease on this side. Otherwise, this whole maneuver right now will not work. So, oh, and then poke the middle. Fingers behind the horizontal and pull your fingers in and down and then push the hood down. Okay, hey, everybody with me? I hope so. All right, now we are going to bring this corner edge to this corner. Anyone have any idea what we're forming? Yeah, I know, you know it's a fish, but what are we making? And then this corner, all of that has got a couple layers also to here. Ta-da! What have we made? The tail! It's the tail of the fish. So exciting. This is the back, by the way. Is it? Yeah. There's the front. So cool. Okay, so if you're here still, you're gonna bring this top layer, well, the only layer, and you're going to bring the corner to the center top right there. There's a big glare there, isn't there? Sorry about that. Maybe I zoomed in too much. There. And there. Crease well. And there's your tail, but it's the back side. Flip it over. Okay, now you get to decide. Do you, do you feel ready to make a decision? Do you want a fish that faces to the right or a fish that faces to the left? If you want one that faces to the right, keep it this way. If you want one that faces to the left, turn it this way. If you're folding two at a time, do one of each. I'm gonna fold one to the, looking to the right, I'm gonna fold it like this, okay? All right, so first thing we're going to do is fold the bottom corner and this little edge here that goes up to the center, we're gonna fold it to the middle of the cupboard door. Okay, so here is our cupboard door. So we're folding it right to that middle slit. Crease it well, unfold, flip it over, and use that same crease, do the same thing. We're just telling the crease to not really have a direction. We don't really want it to know to go to the front or the back. We want to be able to swing it both ways. So it easily moves both ways. Okay, so fold this to the front, undo, flip, fold it to the back. Same crease. Okay, now it's unfolded. We're going to do what's called an inside reverse fold. Oh, don't be scared. I actually think it should be called a reverse inside fold because these creases are gonna be reversed and this portion of the paper, this too, is gonna go inside. So reverse and put the paper inside. So push like this. So I've opened this all up. I can see this, can you see that? See that triangle there made by the creases. Push from the center line, which is actually the bottom, push there, 
the creases tell the paper where to go. You're not making any new creases. And then close up the front again. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so here that is again. Basically, you're, you're popping this triangle inside. So push and then flatten down again. Then I think you figured out probably that we made a fin. So this fin, right on this kind of natural hinge that we have, we want to fold it back. Oh, and I have some, this is called paper creep. That, not creepy paper, but paper creep, that the white is showing a little bit. That's just okay. I actually kind of like it on some models like this because it gives some definition and really shows that, that is a fin. Okay. All right, and now, like I said, I want my fish facing to the right. So here we go with the orange marker again. We are gonna make a crease that goes from this point to this point. So our crease is gonna go like that-ish, sort of. So there's the only reference points are those two corners. So bring this, meaning the upper right corner, bring this like this, make a corner there, and. And oh, I overshot there, right there. So where the point ends, I can't tell you. There's no specific spot. But if you connect, if you make a crease that connects this upper corner with the corner that'll be the mouth, then you've done it correctly. Okay, so crease that down and leave it. Crease and keep. Okay, I'll repeat that. So we have this square headed fish, and now we're gonna make a cool headed fish. So from this back corner to the front corner, we wanna make a crease that connects those. So bring this top corner down, and all you're concerned with is making a crease that connects those two. Okay, now you are going to, you need to notice your cupboard. <laughs> Here I am with the orange again. You, uh, <laughs> you need to notice your cupboard door fold. Let's try this. Your cupboard door fold right there. Because you're going to fold, this is going to be the eye, and you want to fold the eye up, but the fold of the eye has to stay below the cupboard door fold. Does that make sense? So you don't want to make it equal with it. I mean, come on, that'd be a goofy eye, right? You want to make it below, and you'll see why momentarily. It doesn't have to be tons below. It could be a little tiny bit below like that. Shall I zoom in for you? Okay. So, and you don't need to line it up with this or anything. Just try and make it as parallel, this bottom as parallel as you can to that cupboard door fold, that center horizontal. Crease well. And then, this is part of the brilliance of this model. Oh, just love origami. You're going to lift up the layers. So here's the fin. Go all the way to the inner layer and just tuck that eye and the front part of the nose or face, tuck it in. Oh, wow. Isn't that neat? It'll just kind of hold it in there. So that's the happy fish. And if you want a bigger eye, you can yank it up a little bit. And then here would be the contemplating. Thank you, participant who told me that. Or racing, ready to race. Two different eyes there. And your fin. And don't forget, you can make it go the other direction. Maybe I should repeat that part. So I did this, and then this part folded up, but did not go past that horizontal. Hold that triangle for the eye and then lift, open up that bottom part from the horizontal down and tuck in the eye. Done. 
flatten it down. And it can go that way or this way. This seems to lock it in a little bit better. Well, I hope you had fun today. I hope you are going to enjoy the rest of the series and I hope that you will origami on. Um, feel free to follow me on Facebook at Origami and You and check out my classes at the Minnesota Center for the Book Arts and the Minnetonka Center for the Arts and uh, you can contact me for private lessons too but enjoy these classes with the Aquatennial and let's see if there's other comments questions oh thank you Dorothy Dorothy enjoyed Lord Laura thank you very much I'm not sure if I should be reading these out loud um great the spinner okay you're so welcome thanks for coming everybody i'm glad that you enjoy the spinner and you are able able to fold it From London, 